G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of Relationship Advice. Just a friendly reminder that you can now find these episodes on Spotify and Apple Music. Link down in the description below. Anyway, with that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie, and get ready for today's episode. Let's go. My husband and his friends have a nickname for me in their group chat. He won't tell me what it means. So this happened a couple of days ago. My phone died right as I was texting my mom about something rather important, so my husband let me use his. As I was typing, a banner popped up with a text from one of his friends in their group chat, saying to the effect of, hey husband, do you and ST want to Halloween plan that we'd talked about? So of course, I'm like, who's ST? Those are not my initials. And I briefly looked at the chat. A few messages up, I was at least able to confirm ST was me in context of my husband mentioning a specific thing that I'd done that day. Like I said, ST is not an abbreviation of my name or any name that I would go by. None of our friends call me by anything other than my real name, so I was confused. I showed him the chat and asked what it stood for. He looked suddenly really flustered. He grabbed his phone back and said, oh, uh, it's nothing, just a nickname. Okay, well, what's it stand for? He literally wouldn't tell me. He just kept saying, don't worry about it. Well, is there some reason that I would need to worry? I wouldn't be worrying if he just explained what it meant. I was a little put off by this. To find out all his friends are calling me something that I don't even know about. I told him, even if it's just some dumb joke, at least tell me. Because clamming up just makes it look kind of weird. He still refused to tell me. This entire back and forth was maybe a minute or two. Then he suddenly goes, okay, fine, it's super terrific. Um, look, I can't tell if I'm being crazy, but I just don't fully buy that. If that's all it was, why not say so the first time that I asked? I asked like three or four times for him to tell me what it stood for. Why keep avoiding it? On the other hand, I know this makes me look like a really high-strung paranoid person to be suspicious when it could so easily be what he said. I don't want to accuse him of lying with no proof and over something so stupid. This is still bugging me a little. I just want to know if I'm being insane to have an inkling of doubt about it standing for super terrific. Do you think he was telling the truth? Would it be ridiculous to bring it up again at this point? I don't think he's telling the truth, and I don't think it would be ridiculous to bring it up again at this point. He's obviously trying to get you off this topic. Where there's smoke, there is fire. To me, super terrific is a very cringe thing to use as an out, because it just seems more suspicious. My money is on sugar chest. My old roommate's called sparkle chest due to an unfortunate clothing choice. Or stupid twat. Or sexy thing. One of these things is not like the other. Oh my god, what if it's sloppy thirds? Surely this man should have told his super terrific wife the truth once secrecy time ended. Seriously though, that's a pretty shitty thing to be caught in a life as something that shouldn't test a marriage. Sorry to OP. Time to group chat with the other wives. Gotta go hang out with SP. Have fun, I'll be with LD. <laughs> Oh my god, girls, have fun. Me and ED are in for a short night tonight. And now for the update. I ended up getting a text from one of my husband's female friends in his group chat, the day after I posted here. It turns out that right after I asked him about the nickname, he told all of them that I'd seen it and to stop calling me that. She sent me a screenshot of his message, which reads verbatim, LOL, oh crap, me just saw that. I'm so screwed, (laughs) ha ha ha. But seriously, don't send that anymore. I'm gonna end up in the doghouse. Tears of laughter emoji. The female friend who reached out is a new addition to the group as of a couple months ago. I'd met her a couple of times on group outings and I liked her. She told me that she was uncomfortable once she caught on that ST was me and that they were using that behind my back. Then when she was told what it stood for after my husband's message, she thought to contact me in case I didn't know about it. I am extremely grateful for this. Now the part that everyone wanted to know. A lot of you thought that it was Sugar Chest. I really wish. That would be cute and funny. Nope, not my luck. It stands for Sausage Chest. Yeah. That's what my husband and his gaggle of mental 12 year olds refer to me as. I don't even know how or why it started. I cannot fathom the thought that my husband could have described my boobs in detail to all of his friends. 
and then they thought that it sounded hilarious enough to make a nickname out of? I literally don't even know what to feel. I haven't been more humiliated in my life than I am right now. I don't know what to do about him. He apologized, but because it's just a joke to him, he doesn't seem to get or care how I feel. He apologized sincerely and promised that he'd never call me that again or let any of his friends. Why did he ever in the first place? It's not a complimentary nickname that you wouldn't foresee a person not liking, right? Isn't it obvious that it's mean-spirited? Or am I crazy to assume so? Is there some way that I'm just not able to see where it's not actually as bad as I feel? Anyway, that's about it. I don't know what to do. We're sleeping in separate rooms because I can't bear to be near him or have him see me. I never want him to see me naked again. I'm trying to figure out if my need for space is temporary or permanent. If it is permanent, then I'll be pursuing divorce. I just thought so highly of him. I never could have imagined he'd view me like this behind his back. It's like if he was to gain weight and I encouraged all my friends to start calling him fat ass or beer belly behind his back. What other possible reason to do that than contempt? I said this, but he insists it doesn't have any deeper meaning and is just bad humor. Whatever. Time to put kiddos to bed while he's typing away at his phone on the other side of the room. You see, the issue is I'm realizing now there will always be a fear in my mind that he's saying nasty things about me to who knows who. So there's the update. Sausage chest signing out. TLDR, no idea how I'll trust him again. Realistically speaking, this is likely to be another story that ends in divorce. Not even sure if he really gets it or cares. The thing is, he does get it, which is why he told his friends to stop and made a reference to the doghouse. He gets it. He just doesn't care about how it makes you feel. The just a joke line is what people use when they know they've screwed up. I'm so sorry. I would like to add something to your comment. He gets it. He screwed up big time. He is doing the only thing he can do, invalidating her feelings and downplaying the issue. He hopes that OP is dumb enough to fall for it. Okay, what the hell? And they all just went along with it? Frankly, my dear, you deserve better. Bare minimum, those friends wouldn't be in my house. I would definitely not be pleased as well, and I wouldn't stay friends with him. He is a terrible person for remaining friends with them. He would have to get rid of the friends in my opinion. And OP replies, I'm pretty in shock over them too. They've always been nice and included me when we hang out. I do consider them mostly my husband's friends, but we definitely get along. I just don't understand how they'd act like that with me and then like this once I'm not around. The only one of those who is your friend is the girlfriend who told you. Hang on to that one and lose the rest, husband included. I literally gasped when I read what ST stood for. I can't imagine being comfortable around your husband or those friends if I was in your shoes. The casual cruelty of it makes it so much worse. It's disrespectful, dehumanizing, and speaks volumes about how your husband thinks of you. I'm so sorry. You deserve so much better. He should be ashamed, and the fact that he isn't only compounds things. The nasty nickname is bad enough on its own, but the fact that he still treats it like a joke and no big deal would, for me, be a deal breaker. He not only isn't smart enough to get why you would be upset, he also doesn't care that he hurt you. That is unforgivable to me. And OP says, that's what I'm afraid is going on. He's not apologizing because he hurt you. He's apologizing because it's uncomfortable for him to be, as he so eloquently put it, in the doghouse. He just wants you to forget it and move on and get back to the status quo. If my husband saw one of his friends do that, he'd be disgusted and call the guy out. Your husband's friend group is just a circle jerk of toxic masculinity. Quote, he insists it doesn't have any deeper meaning and is just bad humor. I would ask him seriously what is humorous about this. Make him explain to you why he thinks it's funny. Don't let him deflect. If it's just a joke, he should be able to tell you what the punchline is. And OP replies, I did ask how it's funny. He said the shape of my boobs was why he found it funny. The comparison. Our next post is titled, Am I the asshole for not wanting to babysit for my relatives anymore? In short, I agreed to help look after my cousin's child due to skyrocketing daycare costs as a temporary fix. 
I would give them one day a week. The understanding between me, my cousin, and his wife was that this was temporary, as stated. My cousin seems to have forgotten that part. He now expects me to be down there every week. Between drive time and waiting for his wife to get home and take over, that's an entire day where I do nothing but travel or babysit. I spend more hours a day watching his child than I do at my own part-time position, with no compensation. He intends for me to keep this schedule clear to fall, as he signed up for multiple college courses and decided that to accommodate this schedule, I'll be there every week and keep not only the toddler, but a newborn as well. At no point was I consulted about this idea. He's already signed up for courses and just sprung his plan on me the last time I was over. From my perspective, I'm down to one day a week to myself and I spend the most of it just trying to recharge. I never leave the house now except to go to work, get groceries and go to their house. Between extended hours at work and babysitting, I have no energy for any of my hobbies that help me to decompress. I am completely burnt out. The thought of keeping that up for months is doing something to my mental health. I feel like I'm just a means to an end, since when my cousin's wife gets home, I'm rushed out of the house as she and the baby have somewhere to go. I feel like I'm being taken advantage of because I've tried to help once, and I know that my relatives understood that it wasn't a long-term fix to their problem. At the same time, I understand my cousin and his family couldn't have expected the sudden hike in daycare costs, and I know they are struggling financially. My cousin is trying very hard to get his degree and do better by his family, while his wife works long hours to keep them afloat. I know they don't need added stress on top of everything else, which includes having a second child on the way. I've only held out this long because I love the kid I watch. Recent events are actually why I made this post. I told my cousin that we'd have to see if I was available in the fall, which he seemed okay with. Afterwards, older relatives reached out to me about this conversation, urging me towards keeping up the current arrangement. This has frustrated me greatly, but I also wonder how much stock there is in the idea that I should suck it up because they have bigger problems than my being exhausted. So Reddit, am I the asshole for wanting to pull back from this arrangement? OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. I'm considering breaking an agreement with a relative that I feel has taken advantage of me. On the one hand, I might be the asshole for dipping out on someone struggling financially, but on the other hand, he moved the goalposts and expects me to work for him indefinitely for free. There's a case to be made that one of us, both of us, or neither of us are assholes. I'm gonna say I don't think you're the asshole for this one. I can very much relate to burnout and the effects that that has on your mental health and your entire life. And while I can't relate to having a child, having a second one on the way, and being in your cousin's positions, I'm always an advocate of you having to put yourself first and your needs first. Obviously, context is always very important for things like that, but definitely in this situation, I think you need to pull back and give yourself that time to breathe. There are other people that can help, but instead of helping, they're reaching out and whipping you to make sure that you stay in your lane, you stay downtrodden, and you're in your place. I don't agree with their behavior, and I don't like the way you're being treated. I think you're not the asshole. Not the asshole. And you have done way more than enough. It is completely acceptable, and in fact, you owe it to yourself to say, I know it's hard, but I can't sustain this anymore. So we need to talk about how to transition you to regular daycare, since I'm not going to be able to continue helping out in the fall. And honestly, the fact that they are having a second child when they can't even support the first shows me that they're not super concerned with being responsible here and are in fact taking advantage of your generosity and kindness. Alternatively, you could propose an amount that you would be comfortable being paid for the work. I'm sure they'd rather pay you than a stranger, and you deserve to be paid. But that's only if you want to continue doing this. If those older relatives feel this is so important, then they are welcome to pitch in. Next time they say something, tell them, you're so right, it is so important. In fact, can I schedule you for next Wednesday? Not the asshole. They obviously haven't made any effort to make other arrangements. At this point, it would be very reasonable to give notice, say one month to be generous, that you won't be able to babysit for them any longer. Your other relatives who are pressuring you are more than welcome to take over. 
You have done enough. Also, the school may offer some babysitting services. Edited to add, I looked and my daughter's university offers both on-campus childcare and subsidies for childcare. Your cousin should look into whether his college offers childcare help. And OP replies, This actually put it into perspective for me. They have had ample time to look into alternatives, yet don't seem to have taken any initiative to do so. Instead, they're banking on me coming through with what limited time I have for double the workloads. Exactly. They have had plenty of time and have not only made no effort to make other arrangements, but are now expecting you to continue through the year at least. And now on to the update. First, I want to thank the users here for giving me perspective. It became clear as I read comments that I was being taken advantage of. And while I feel for my cousin's problems, I am not responsible for and cannot fix them. I have to put myself first or else I cannot give my best to the child at the center of the issue. Per the advice given, I confronted my cousin directly and tried to talk things out. I told my cousin that if I was going to keep up the arrangement through autumn, I wanted the summer off from babysitting. I also said that we would discuss compensation when he got home from class. Unfortunately, this made things worse. For the rest of the morning, I was dictated to as to what I could feed the kid, what tasks we could do, etc. It was apparent over a series of texts and calls that I was no longer a helper, but the help. A joke about the toddler wanting a certain food got shot down rudely. To be honest, it ended up making me cry because it was so unexpectedly mean when I was just joking. His wife visited for lunch and I brought up that I wanted a break. She demanded to know why and then I explained that I was stressed out and I needed time for myself. I was told that I was being unreasonable. She made it clear that I can't be stressed out because I'm a single part-timer compared to her as a full-time worker that still has to come home and be a wife and mother. I realized at that point that my cousin and his wife consider my time somehow less valuable than theirs. I have not been back since. They have cut all contact with me for the time being, though other relatives have made it clear that they think I blew things out of proportion and am in the wrong. This has extended to being left out of family events. I miss the kid that I babysit and am hurt that she had a recent hospital stay and I was not told. It appears I am only allowed to be a part of her life so long as I kowtow to her parents despite having taken care of her since she was months old and often provided for her financially. That aside, there is a silver lining. With my newfound freedom and desire to break the work store home cycle, I adopted a rescue dog. Meet Kaladin Stormbark. He's helped me get out of the house and re-engage with the world, and that's done wonders for my mental health after the problems that I had in my last post. That's where it ends for now, and I really just wanted to let those who had offered me help with my first post know how thankful I am for their insight and advice. I'll be the first to admit that I got a weak spine, so it was game-changing to have a bunch of strangers reassure me and give me the desire to stand up for myself. Things might not have worked out this time, but I know ultimately confronting the problem and communicating was for the best. Thanks for the update. It sounds like you're better off in every way. A big win. You should be proud of yourself. Also, very cool dog and name. Sure, it sucks that you're being excluded, but I can't help but thinking that you're just better off without people like this in your life. They sound like parasites, to be honest. Well done. You did the right thing. The reason your relatives are giving you grief is because one, they're afraid they'll be asked to close the gap that you left when you stopped, either by babysitting directly or be contributing towards childcare costs, and two, they don't want anyone else in the family who is being bullied to see your example and also stop letting themselves be bullied. Don't ever babysit for them again. They will come back in the autumn and they will say to you, you've had your summer holidays. We expect you now to come back and work harder and longer. That's what she said. Don't go back, get a job, become independent, never work for your family again. They sound toxic and bullying. And OP replies, I had discussed with my cousin that I would be willing to continue helping if my workload was cut down to twice a month. Of course, that was before everything went sideways. 
That's off the table now, but I definitely need to be prepared in case he does pull what you've predicted while calling on my previous offer. You've mentioned in your post that you thought you had a weak spine. When dealing with aggressive friends or relatives in the past, I've always found it helpful to practice my response beforehand and to keep my answers short. That way, you're not drawn into a back and forth argument and your preparation keeps you from getting flustered and agreeing to do something that you didn't want to agree to do. You asked for the smallest amount of respect and they needed to deny that because they'd have to own that they've exploited you. Don't set yourself on fire to keep someone else warm. Good job standing up for yourself, taking care of yourself and getting a doggo. It's funny how the family that turns on the person who's been taken advantage of never have a solution that involves them giving up some of their free time or driving for hours. I was about to say this, none of those older relatives have any spare time to babysit, huh? Dang, wouldn't you know it? They've got important things to do. Goal for something. Anyway, whatever it is, too busy to watch a kid and literal newborn infant. And that's where I'm going to end the episode today, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, as it does actually help out the channel a lot. And with that said, I will see you in the next episode. Bye.